This is Mike Einspar, and this is my presentation for gifts to students or staff. Uh, for gifts for students, gifts or prizes for students paid for from activity funds are appropriate for number one is incentives during the fundraising event. Uh, one example is using uh, tickets to a theme park. Uh, one thing that we use uh, in our football team right now are uh, we use backpacks this last year. And all that money that the students earn went directly to the students who raised money this year. And the money was taken from the money that they had raised specifically during the football account. Um, this goes right along with giving only two students to participate in the fundraising event. So if a student's not going to participate and they're, they're gone that day or they choose not to participate in it, uh, really those rewards or that money should not be used for those, for those students. Uh, gifts not related to fundraising should not favor one group or students over another. That example would be the student council should not raise money, or you know, if the student council is going to raise money, that money uh, should be used for student council events, not necessarily go to the basketball team or to the wrestling team. Uh, the second one is for special achievement gifts, so medals, certificates, ice cream socials. Um, Two things here. Gifts should be nominal, so very, very minimal. We want, you know, we don't want to raise money just to give out awards, and they should be age appropriate. So, you know, if if the kindergartners or first graders are, are raising money, uh, I'm not sure an Xbox as a reward or an incentive to sell more stuff is really age appropriate. Uh, any funding for these gifts can come out of the general fund, um, a PTO group, you know, an outside agency, an athletic fund can can pay for these. Gifts to staff members. Uh, the biggest thing here to remember is the money, it really needs to be used for students uh, in classes or towards their activity funds or, or whatever group was, was raising them. Most of this money was not raised uh, to give just staff, you know, um, better shirts, you know, whatever, gifts of some kind. But there are some things that, that, that you can do with that money for staff, you know, special occasions. If a person is getting married, you know, something reasonable. Um, you know, candlesticks, candlesticks are always a good gift. Um, and these funds need to become out of, you know, the book called it a remembrance fund. Um, you know, the principal may have different names for them at your school, but um, they need to be managed by a rotating committee. Um, you know, there needs to be annual dues paid by staff into that specific fund, um, whether it be donations or an annual dues. There needs to be a rotating committee. So several people, you know, are rotated on that and they decide what the uh, guidelines are for the committee um, and how that money is to be used. Uh, some of the incentives that you can use for staff if they are you know helping to fundraise, you know you can help um, give out gift certificates, but we do re do remember that any money um, that that is spent on uh, gift certificates or incentives or you know needs to come out of the profits for you know from that fundraising item. Um, if it's an all school issue, you know, a lot of schools will give a logo shirt, you know, a shirt that says West Franklin on it may say, you know, Central High, uh, doesn't matter um, to everybody. That stuff needs to come out of, um, you know, a general fund, which is okay to use. Um, if you, if the principal choose, or you as the principal choose to give cash or, you know, check as an incentive for fundraising, that's really income and needs to be reported on the employee's W-2 form and counted as income. Uh, a couple uh, benefit type fundraising, you know, you're going to raise money to help, uh, you know, maybe um, a family that, you know, has went through a fire, a flood, um, to help raise money to give to that family or a teacher. You know, a lot of people do cancer type fundraising, which is, you know, awesome stuff. But just remember that anytime you give a staff member cash or a check, um, you know, that has to be reported on their W-2 as income. Um, and, and that's something that, you know, an area that maybe you don't really want to use on your, you know, for your own books. So, the, you know, the textbook really recommended that you use a PTA group, an outside agency to funnel the money through them on their books. So it's really not public money. Um, some of the benefits would be, you know, uh, you know, it, it would not get confused or, or maybe cross the lines with in public money. Uh, after being in public uh, education for so long, I think you have to be very transparent and upfront. And anytime you're using public funds, you have to have the ability to at any point in time um, 
back up what it is you've used those funds for. Uh, I'm, I'm very specific with my staff, football and basketball wise, but anytime those the, the athletes raise money, we're going to use it for the athletes, whether it be sweatshirts, t-shirts, pizzas, uh, you know, whatever for the, you know, they're not, you know, we're not raising money so that the coach can have a better shirt, so they can have a warm up, so that they can go to clinics, you know, whatever the, you know, a better TV in his office, it really needs to be used for the kids. Uh, I take the common sense role that um, money should be raised by the kids, for the kids, uh, spent on the kids, um, and, and, and some common sense, and, and that generally will, will get me through. So um, thank you.